We've seen that electron configuration is defined in terms of achieving an octet of electrons. We also saw that it was defined in terms of the number of electron pair domains. And here we're going to see the third aspect that attributes or defines electron configuration, and that's formal charge. In formal charge, we're attempting to assign an electron count to each atom, and it's based on the number of lone pair electrons that that atom has. All of the lone pair electrons are assigned to that atom, and half the number of electrons that are shared in bonding domains are assigned to that atom. So take this generic atom A with a double bond domain, a single bond domain, and a lone pair domain. If we look at how many electrons are assigned to that atom by putting this blue circle around it, and we see that the lone pair all belong to the circle, all are assigned to atom A, half of the bonding electrons are assigned to A, we can come up with, after breaking that, those single bonds into a pair of electron dots, a total of five electrons that are assigned to atom A. If we assign atom A a particular atom type, like, for example, boron with a valence count of three, and it's assigned that boron is assigned with five electrons, then there would be a surplus of two electrons. Two more electrons are assigned to that boron than its valence count. Since electrons are negative, the formal charge on that boron would be minus two. In the case of carbon, with a valence count of four being assigned five electrons to that carbon, there would be a surplus of one additional electron. Electrons being negatively charged, one additional electron would give a formal charge of minus one. In the case of nitrogen, there's five valence electrons, which perfect, perfectly matches the number of electrons assigned to that double bond, single bond, and lone pair domain. And so in the case of nitrogen, we have a neutral species. In other words, a formal charge of zero. Oxygen has six valence electrons. If, it were a, if a particular oxygen were assigned a count of five because of a lone pair, a single bond, and a double bond domain, we'd be one short, uh, one electron short of its valence count. And in this case, there would be a formal charge of plus one. In the case of fluorine with seven valence electrons, we'd be two short. There's two electrons less than the number of valence electrons. We have a formal charge assigned as plus two. And so our analysis gives boron in this configuration with a double bond, a single bond, and a lone pair domain as a formal charge of minus two. For carbon in that arrangement, we have formal charge of minus one. Nitrogen is neutral. Oxygen is plus one. Fluorine is plus two. There's an important rule you're going to want to take note of. For the period two elements, the formal charge must be in the range always of minus one to plus one. Formal charges outside that range are simply unreasonable. We never encounter those configurations. That means that it's completely unreasonable to expect and ever to see boron with a double bond domain, a single bond domain, and a lone pair because it has a formal charge of minus two outside the range. And likewise, we're never going to see fluorine with a double bond, a single bond, and a lone pair domain. For a double bond, a single bond, and a lone pair domain, we can expect to see carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. And in fact, it's this kind of an approach that's going to allow us to systematically identify all of the possible electron configurations for all the period two elements in the various formal charge states. And that's where we're going to next. Before we do that, why don't you pause the recorder and try to work these problems shown here, see which of these electron configurations are reasonable, and which ones you can toss away because of the simple rule that period two elements must fall with formal charge in the range of minus one to plus one. Okay, so here I've made the assignments of the formal charges. We can go through these and immediately rule out anything that's outside the normal range. We found that several of these have formal charges of plus or minus two, so those get immediately crossed off. And then we're left with a, what looks reasonable, except for when we do Lewis octet counting, we run into some problems, and in particular here, instead of having an octet of electrons, this is electron deficient nitrogen. It only has six electrons. Even though it's got a neutral charge, neutral formal charge, we're going to rule it out as well because it doesn't have an octet of electrons. And similarly for this carbon, it only has six electrons. Even though it has a neutral formal charge, 
we're going to rule it out as well. These other species have an octet of electrons. They've satisfied their octet count, and they have formal charges that are in the acceptable range. These are reasonable building blocks. So reasonable building blocks must have an appropriate formal charge and satisfy the Lewis octet rule. What we can do now is systematically look at all of the period two elements and define for them the electron configurations that meet these two criteria.